Hey there, fellas. Alright, so... Things seem to be getting a little out of hand. Nah, it's alright. So you might remember one of our recent videos, where we used 100 bike pumps to inflate a tire. So that video can be summed up by the fact that all of those pumps allow for quickly putting air into a tire. Everybody was very enthusiastic. We had a lot of fun. But those were manual pumps. This time we're gonna be using air compressors that run on electricity. 100 of them, same as last time. And we'll be using them to do the exact same thing. Though I do think that these compressors do have a bit more power to them. And so, I say we try... First we'll check to see how much peak pressure they can generate, and after that we go ahead and find something big. For us to inflate in a spectacular fashion. Alright, let's do this. How fast can 100 electric inflators fill a tire? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Check this out, fellas. The most interesting matter is how to connect all of these inflators. This time we've decided to go with a rail. We've drilled a bunch of holes in this square tube and put in a bunch of valve stems. As you can see, we've got 100 of them in there. This is all coming together very nicely. We just need to weld up the ends. On one end we're gonna need to make a connection for the hose. But that does leave us with one problem. Specifically how to get everything connected. On this end you just have to attach the inflators and that's it. It's gonna be a bit more challenging to do all of the wiring though. Now whatever, we'll figure it out. Let's carry on with assembly. Okay, check out what we've got here. You're looking at 50 inflators, which have already been routed into the rail, so that's all good. But there's a slight issue. We just measured how much current the inflators need to be fed. And it fluctuates between like 8 and about 12 and a half amps. Multiply that by 100 units, each taking in 12 amps, that's a total of 1200 amps. Where can we even find that much? Okay, fellas, so right now we've got all of the 100 inflators attached to the rail. And here's the singular output tube, which is attached to the tire. The wheel has got two fittings, so that we can simultaneously fill it with air and measure the tire pressure in real time, as we're in the process of inflating the tire. Anyway, that's enough with the chit-chat. Time for us to see how much time it takes for one inflator to fill a 15-inch wheel with air. Let's do this. There we are. I gather we're gonna be tracking this gauge for a long time. That inflator is pretty tiny. Though sometimes it can truly turn out to be a lifesaver on the road. Okay, so far we're at... 1 minute and 7.7 .7 psi. It's doing an okay job, though it is taking a while. Eh, no worries. Come on, hang in there. That's one kilo in two minutes. So we're inflating our 15-inch wheel at a rate of two minutes per kilo. Keeping track. Just a bit more left to go. We have definitely missed the mark at four minutes. 29 psi and we're done. Here's the situation, fellas. So one inflator took 4 minutes and 42 seconds to create 29 psi of pressure inside that 15-inch wheel. For such a tiny inflator to fill such a big wheel with air, that's a pretty decent result, isn't it? So now we use two inflators, which should give us a result similar to when we used those manual pumps, when we went down from 100 hits to 50 times 2, which gave us very similar tire pressure. Here, if we use two inflators, we should be done in 2 minutes and uh, 21 seconds. We're already at half a kilo. 
not even a minute has passed, and that's almost 14 and a half PSI. 24.6, 26, on the mark. The result is much better than we expected. We were expecting to see 2 minutes and 20 seconds, but in fact the result is a minute 58 with 2 inflators. We'll skip 3 and go right to 4. Awesome! They flipped on almost simultaneously. Let's keep track of the reading. 1 minute and we're at 26. 27.5. 27 Stop! So all four inflators were added for a minute. One minute and nine seconds to be exact. You can plainly tell that each time the result is just getting better and better. And nothing unexpected. For when you're going from one to two and then to four. But how long is it gonna take ten inflators to fill a 15-inch wheel with air? Fantastic. This is turning out to be a lot of fun. 10 inflators fill one 15-inch wheel with 29 pounds of pressure in a mere 34 seconds. Now that's a solid result. If we take the volume of that rail out of the equation, it should go down to 30 seconds. Now I suggest we go all the way to 50 and see how long it takes for 50 inflators to fill a 15-inch wheel with 29 pounds of pressure. And we're off! Look at that reading climb! A bit more and... Uh, stop! Well, if we were to factor in margin of error, that's 12 seconds. 12 seconds to fill one 15-inch wheel. Holy cow! That is quick. Okay, we are all in position and ready to flip on all 100 inflators. Who was counting down? Was it you? On the count of three. One, two, three. There we go. Stop! Holy crap! Now that's a result! Nine seconds! That's how long it takes for 100 inflators to do their thing. Well, that is slightly faster than it took for 50 units. A three second difference also counts for something, right? Let's go ahead and confirm the result. One, two, three. Nope. The result is the same. 9 seconds. Well, okay, 9.3, but... 9 seconds. That's what you get with 100 inflators. That's what I'd call a successful experiment. So 9 seconds to fill a 15-inch wheel. Okay, fellas, here's the situation. We saw 9 seconds with 100 inflators. But let's not forget that we're also packing an air compressor. And a high-quality one. Interesting to see what wins. One big inflator, or a hundred smaller ones. You've already done the countdown, go ahead. One, two, three. Here we go. Just a bit. Yeah, let's not forget that the system does take a while to fill with air. While here, we've got immediate pressure buildup. Still though, at ten seconds... The inflators are winning. We've decided to even out the playing field. We'll use the big compressor to fill up the rail, or it to then fill the tire. Meanwhile, I'm going to be taking a reading. Let's go! One, two, three. Great, whatever you say. Now that's a complete and utter fail. It fell behind immediately. Here's the situation, fellas. 
Our big compressor took 19 seconds to fill up the tire through the common rail. We wanted it to build some pressure in there first, for the compressed air to then go to the tire. And that process took 19 seconds, so 100 inflators are much more efficient. And in continuing with the experiment, we've decided to do the following and see which system is actually more efficient. So we've got a giant tire tube. Let's see how high the tube can get. We've placed a... how do I say... a sort of wooden measuring tool. We basically inflate it and then use a tape measure to find out how high it is off the ground. For example, it might be 60 centimeters the first time around. And the point is to give our inflator system the same amount of time to inflate the tire tube. So this will be a battle between the one big compressor and 100 smaller ones, to see which is more efficient. Big compressor on the left, 100 inflators on the right. Six hundred and fifty-six millimeters. So in three minutes that big compressor was able to put enough air into the tire tube for the plank to get six hundred and fifty-six mil above the ground. Seven hundred and twenty-five, if you look at the upper mark. So in the end those one hundred inflators, despite them being tiny, are much more efficient than the one big compressor with its gigantic air reservoir. It's basically the same story as with those manual pumps. It's tough when you're alone, a bit easier when there are two people working, and when we got the entire neighborhood together, a few hits and the wheel was full. It's the same basic principle. So we've just inflated a big tire tube, which was rather interesting. We decided not to blow it up since you will be seeing it later. It's the only one we've got, but we do have plenty of smaller ones. Now let's get right to it. Flipping them on. I was late. I was too late. And here's what we're looking at. It was torn apart at the inner seam. We're looking at a 107% success rate here. This was a tremendous success. One inflator got that 15-inch wheel inflated in 4 minutes and 42 seconds. That's a long wait. But when you've got 100 of them, they take a mere 9.5 seconds. Those are amazing results. 4.5 minutes and 9 seconds. And that's all I have for you fellows. Watch us, subscribe, buy some inflators. We've got a few of them for sale. I'm just kidding. Subscribe, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.